Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Hammer Museum. I'm Claudia Bester. I'm the Director of Public Programs, and I'm very pleased to welcome you to today's talk called Patterns Found in the World with Lucita Hurtado and Andriana Campbell. Before we get started, I want to remind you to please silence your cell phones, and please note that video, audio, and photos are not allowed in the theater, but we are videotaping this, and we will make it available on the Hammer website if you want to share it with people. Um, I also just quickly want to mention some other upcoming Hammer programs. Um, on Tuesday, July 24th, Made in LA artist Jalari Kashkazaran and Candice Lynn will be here, and they'll screen films and talk about their work. Then on July 25th, we're having a panel discussion about environmental equity as part of our series called Future LA, Engineering a Sustainable Super City. On August 1st, we'll have a program called The Black Book, which chronicles black life and thought through literature, cinema, and other media. It's kind of like a photo album, a mixtape, and a love letter to the past, present, and future of black aesthetics. Then on August 21st, we're having a panel on indigenous water rights and the legacy of murdered indigenous Lenca activist, Berta Caceres, hosted by Made in LA artist, Carolina Caicedo. If you'd like to receive reminder emails about our upcoming programs, please be sure to sign up for our email list. You can do that on the iPad in the lobby of the theater, or you can always find out more on our website. So now I'd like to introduce today's program. Artist Lucita Hurtado's expensive, <laughs> expensive, expansive career. I don't think it was that expensive. It's certainly impressive. Good ROI. Um, her expansive career is marked by a rigorous commitment to experimentation, and as demonstrated by her body landscapes from the 1960s and 1970s, which are currently on view in the Hammers Biennial Exhibition, Made in LA 2018. Lucita Hurtado was born Luisa Amelia Garcia Rodriguez Hurtado in Caracas, Venezuela in 1920. And for those of you who aren't so great at math, that means she is 97 years old. In 1928, she immigrated to New York City, thus becoming one of the millions of immigrants who make America great. Um, yeah. She's had an absolutely fascinating life and traveled in truly remarkable artistic circles. In New York City, she started, studied at the Art Students League and began her career as a fashion illustrator for Condé Nast and a muralist for Lord & Taylor. In the mid-1940s, she frequently went back and forth between New York and Mexico City, where she was part of an international creative community of artists and writers displaced by World War II. In the late 1940s, she moved to Mill Valley in Northern California, where she was closely associated with the trio of artists known as the Dynaton Group. And then in 1951, she moved to Los Angeles, where she has resided ever since. She had recent solo exhibitions at the Annenberg Community Beach House in Santa Monica and at the Parkview Gallery in MacArthur Park. Prior to those, her last solo exhibition was at the Women's Building in Los Angeles in 1974. But now there's a huge resurgence of interest in her work and a major feature article in the LA Times last week and a big spread in Art Week and numerous other articles that you might enjoy checking out. She's going to be speaking today with Andriana Campbell, an art historian specializing in art from the modern and contemporary period. Campbell's PhD is focused on the early abstract, abstract expressionist artist Norman Wilfred Lewis. Campbell's also the author of Essays and Reviews for Art Forum, Art in America, and Freeze. She's the co-founding co-editor of Apricota, a critical journal dedicated to an alternative approach to art and art history. So now, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Lucita Hurtado and Andriana Campbell. Hi, everyone. And I, uh, I want to thank everyone for coming out today on this gorgeous afternoon um, to hear our discussion. I'd like to extend my thanks to Anne Elgood, Aaron uh, Cristovale, and the team here at The Hammer who've been fantastic in putting this together. 
Um, I also would like to thank John Mulliken, Matt Mulliken, and in particular, Ryan Good, who in the very beginning uncovered a lot of Luchita's work when he was going through Lee's estate and was really instrumental in bringing together 70 years of her practice. And who actually enlisted me very early on as an advisor and really sparked my interest, which led to me writing a 2015 interview with Luchita. But also, of course, I'd like to th th thank Luchita Hortado, whose tenaciousness, talent, and spirit we're lucky to be in the presence of today. So Luchita, um, we had that wonderful introduction from Claudia, but I wanted to kind of go through some of the paintings and start with your earliest work, which is this painting. Oh yes, yeah, that's a very early one. <laughs> yeah. Well, that well, we had this introduction because I think that for many people, um, they, they know that you moved here from Venezuela at eight years old, and then you were a mother quite young, and you had two children. And it, through your first husband, Daniel Del Solar, you uh, started working with the Chilean newspaper, La Prensa. And through that, you met Martha Graham and Noguchi. No, that's wrong. <laughs> well, that's what I had in the, in the well, bio. Well, you see, the thing is that uh, 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 say it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so the bio that, you know. The bi course. That bio is wrong because yeah. uh, it, it, it um, uh, I married Del Solar. Yes, of course. After yeah. I finished high school. Yes. I finished high school and I went and offered my services that summer yeah. to, um, to the La Prensa. Yes. And there I met Del Solar. Yes. And he invited me to have coffee. Yeah. And he, he was working for the Associated Press mm -hmm. at that time. And he treated me like a grown up. And yeah. this was really amazing to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I was impressed. And we became friends. I met the ex-president of Chile. I met all these people who were really fascinating people from Latin America. And um, I had two children. I'm, we married, of course, mm -hmm. and had two children. And uh, he abandoned us. I had never worked in my life. Yeah. By that time, I was all of 25, never having worked. And um, I had a very difficult time of it. Uh, he just came for his books and left. Of course, yes. And, and, and the, the wife of um, my pediatrician yeah. gave, gave, said you, you could get a job uh, doing windows at Lord and Taylor's. Yeah. And so I went to work. I put the children in school and I went to work, and... Uh, but you also started working as a... I beg your pardon? You also, well, I wanted to backtrack to 42, because you were 22 when you made this painting. So, part, you know, part of what I read is that you had started thinking about, obviously, making work before you uh, started working at Lord & Taylor, because you were 20. Well, it's probably true. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm 97, so I know I mix things up. I know. So, and, uh, so <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes, I have to ask my son John, did this really happen, or, or, or did I dream it? I know, and we did go through this, so um, bear with us while we we get started. But. Um, so I'm showing this early painting because I think that, you know, when you look at it, it's, uh, you can see some of the relationship to kind of early work that was happening in New York um, around this time. Um, not so much the abstract expressionists. I mean, you knew a fair amount of those artists, and you knew Noguchi, uh, which, you know, we've discussed, and Graham. But I think that this work looks, you know, like very much in relationship to some of the painting that was happening in the United States and in New York in the early part of the 20th century. Um, I, I, like, I was a romantic. Yeah. And this just pleased me no end. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> yeah. The, 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 especially the one drinking the water. Yeah. That really got to me because that the look of an animal when it drinks water is so strange, isn't it? And, and, and the combination of the animal and the water was particularly intriguing with the, with the same line and then the moon coming up. Yeah. It, it's, it's a good composition for a very young person. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> Let's keep going. Um, I'm going to go to this painting, because at some point we discussed how you knew Tamayo, and he had actually painted this painting in your kitchen, yes. which is a very famous yes. uh, work by Rufina Tamayo. Yes. His wife, Olga, you see, mm -hmm. had had a, a breakdown. Yeah. Uh, they were very good friends of Pierre Matisse in New York. And Pierre Matisse was the son of Henri Matisse. And so uh, they were seeing people in New York that uh, were very important in life. And she ended up in... Um, in a hospital. Yeah. In, uh, she lost her mind completely. And she told me that when she regained her senses that she looked down and saw her skirt. And she said, whose skirt is this? Because she had lost her, her mind. Yeah. And she was back. And Rufino came to live with us. And... Uh, and so he ended up in my kitchen. When, when, when she went home to Mexico, yeah. he, he would come home to me mm -hmm. and my husband, yeah. uh, Daniel. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and those he painted in my kitchen. Well, I, like, I wanted to show that because also at the same time, you're making a lot of these early drawings of fruit. Yes. And I start to think about the relationship. It has nothing to do with Tamayo. Uh, my, yes, those are beets. They're not. I know they're not watermelons. <laughs> I know they're not watermelons. <laughs> but. I think it's very funny that you mentioned that because it has nothing to do with it. <laughs> I know. But we talked about the fact that, of course, Tamayo was in. You were in proximity. You were watching him paint. He was in your no, kitchen. No, no, I wasn't watching him. But he paint. was around. No, 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 no. And so, no, no, he wasn't around in, 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 but in the kitchen. No, he wasn't in the kitchen. He was right? in the kitchen. He was. He. Where he, is he? No, he, he, no. He some. He, I mean, this yeah. man. He, he wasn't. He, he was painting in in the kitchen, but I wasn't sitting there yeah. watching him paint. I know you so were sitting. So that has nothing to do with that. I know, but when we looked at these together, you were like, yes. There I know, but why do you have them together? Because we were talking about... <laughs> giving me a very hard time here. Because we were talking about how... We were talking about the relationship of you to other artists in New York at the time. The, the people no, that there you was were... no relationship. Yeah. We, play, we played a game, sweetie. Yeah. We played a game, and I would, he would say to me, how do you mix... Uh, this uh, this strange kind of brown. Yeah. And we would sit, yeah. and then we would play with the paints. Yeah. And, I, you know, so yeah. I learned. I learned mixing colors from yeah. him. But, Which uh, is what we but, discussed. But, but the, those dogs have nothing to do with that, with, with that animal drinking water. I didn't say that. Well, this, <laughs> this is later. I wasn't, I wasn't implying that, but I think that the, it's important well, uh, I to mean, think about uh, the relationship Showing between. both things together. Uh, not related. But I think that part of the conversation, I'm showing obviously the slides well, of Tamayo for people who don't know the work. I'm, I'm and sorry. And so it's a, in order for the audience to get a sense of what his work was like, yes. what paintings were like but, but in you the see, 40s, it, and also a, the fact that he taught you to mix colors in the period. Like artists do. Yeah, of course. And so there's obviously this interconnectedness. Yes, but he was not my teacher. No, I wouldn't say he was a teacher. No. but. You know, if we think well, about, I just wanted say, to clear it, you of see. course. So if we think about even like the relationship of artists, you know, working together in the same studio, we can talk about Frank Stella and you know Carl Andre. We can talk about Duchamp and Picabia. We can talk about Brock and Picasso. The kind of relation, you know, even if you're not directly influencing each other, you're not. You are in. No, we were talking about his wife. 
yeah. Who was in the country. Of course, but you're also talking about color, which is really important to, to yes, think about. Yes, but yeah. that didn't take that long. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, maybe we'll move on. I have a few more comparisons that we did, we looked at on Friday, but um, I think um, it's important, um, as you mentioned, uh, that Daniel... You think, you think there's a... This is, this is my, my <laughs> second hand. Well, husband. I know, I know. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get, I, I, was, I was waiting for you to, to say, well, I don't know who he is, and I'm, I'm not going to. But um, uh, so basically what happens is after Daniel, you um, then uh, you're working as an uh, illustrator. You're working for Lord and Taylor. Um, you're so, you, you, know, you have these two children. Um, but you end up going to a Wolfgang Pollen exhibition yeah. of his work, and this painting um, actually hangs in your home, this drawing. Would you tell us about the circumstances around this drawing and why it's particularly a particular important Well, because important I, in your life? I really think it's a beautiful drawing. Yeah. I think he was one of the most talented people I've ever known. He spoke six languages. Mm -hmm. He was um, a very kind man, mm -hmm. and uh, he... He was my teacher in a way, mm -hmm. but he was my teacher about life. So what happened when you went to this exhibition? Well, how did well, you acquire this drawing? What? How did you acquire this drawing? He gave it to me Yeah. because I liked it. Yeah. I was already divorced from my husband, yeah. Yeah. my first husband. Yeah. Let's make that clear. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so you went to this exhibition of pollens. He says to you, you can have any drawing on the wall, right? Yes. Which one is your favorite? And, and they had just discovered, let me clear that, but yeah. Um, what happened there was that they had just discovered the frescoes in, in Bonham Park. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or was it the big heads? It's the big heads. The big yeah. heads somewhere. Anyway, it was the big heads, and he said, uh, they've just discovered these things. Would you like to go? Yeah. And I said, yes, I certainly would. And so we went. We lived on a houseboat. And um, we were married uh, in a week. It was instant. Instant love. So he takes this drawing off the wall and he gives it to her and signs it. And actually, it hangs in her living room when you can see the signature. Um, and the fact that's from uh, 46. And then subsequently, you a know, week, you join him. A week later. Yeah, a week we later. We fell in love. You, jo you join him in Mexico, and then. No, yes, go ahead. <laughs> I don't know why this is happening, but I, we usually get along really well. No, I, I, th I, th I, think, <laughs> I think this is very funny. I know you're enjoying yourself. I know she's like, I feel like I'm being roasted. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, the life of an art historian is never involved. There it is. There's a big hit. That was an article. You see, I took that. I, um, so I think I took that photograph. And he, he, asked, he asked, when I took that photograph here on the right, um, he asked, he, he bought me a camera. And he said, you can, you can do this. You can take photographs. Yeah. And he said, take that photograph, and I took my hat off. And um, I had a, a, a heat thing, you know? I suddenly had a, felt like I had a fever. I couldn't, couldn't see right. It was, mm -hmm. I, I got sick. And uh, yeah. Would you talk about the draw in the period to go see these large Olmec The heads? what? Would you talk about, like, what was the fascination with the, Ol the Olmec heads? Because I know that in 1964, they actually... Well, because, you see, there was no stones. This is the yeah. middle of the forest. Yeah. And the first st stones like this that can be carved. And this was, you know, before the car. Yeah, so you had to hike out to actually... So how, how the hell did it get there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No way. So this particular issue is, is filled with numerous photographs that Luchita took, and you can see that um, she has a byline there. It's Luchita Pollen. Well, you know, um, we, we lived in a very, um, on, in, on the boat, and, mm -hmm. and we were parked a village. Mm -hmm. And they, um, 
came down to watch us. It was an audience like you. I mean, and here we were having food, living, mm -hmm. and, and the, the, with a light on the water, on the boat. And on the water, these white butterflies came and they, they, they drowned. And so oh. it was like a carpet of butterflies. Yeah. It was amazing. And I, I, I watched Pollen uh, drink water that had things swimming in it. <laughs> and I, 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 I couldn't. He, he was a very daring pirate kind of man. <laughs> this I've heard, yeah. And you guys had, for a while, you were going between Mexico and, and New York. At one point, you got stuck across the border, actually, right? Oh yes, oh yes, that was, that was, uh, yes. That's, that's a very interesting story. Um, what happened there was, uh, <laughs> I, have, I had a friend in New York who was the head of the Brooklyn um, Museum. Mm -hmm. His name was Joseph Spinden, and he was a fantastic, um, uh, what do they call people who study age? Uh, Hmm? Well, Geriatric. Uh, no, no, no. Study age, you said? Uh, study, study the, no, no, no not the ages. Archaeologist. Archaeologist. Oh, okay. That's the word. You see, I'm 97, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't work so well today. <laughs> so uh, anyway, uh, he asked me if I saw anything that he that the museum would be interested in mm -hmm. to please send it to him. Yeah. So um, they were building roads and they were doing all of these things in Mexico. And you'd find in the dirt on the roads, you see, these these pre pre-Columbian uh, objects. And I thought, well, Spinden would love it, you see. Mm -hmm. And um, I called him, and he said, by all means, send them to me. And the Brooklyn Museum probably still has those things. At any rate, to make life easier for me, mm -hmm. I made believe that these were objects, uh, you know, that were uh, with little hats on them, so nobody would handle them or anything, you see. Yeah. And they were toys. I put them down as toys. Yeah, yeah. And when they reached the museum, no, before they reached the museum, mm -hmm. they came to me and they said, you are under arrest. You are the guest of the American government. And so there we were. My husband was having a fit. Yeah. You know. He really didn't feel comfortable. And I said, enjoy your time here. The yeah. government's paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, at any rate, you know, it ended up, I told the story to this, to this person who uh, made life difficult for us. And, um, and he said, well, they're just arriving in New York. So we're going to find out if they have dope inside of those things. That's what they thought they yeah. were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, they unfolded it when they arrived at the museum. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Spinden, when this happened, was furious. And he said, those are ancient things, and there's no dope. And if you have no right to do this, and, and they, they, this is the head of a museum, hey. So you take note, and they use the machines to see if something was in them. Mm -hmm. They apologized to me. <laughs> and they said, you're OK. Do you want a job? That's what they said. <laughs> Actually, they said, do you want a job? <laughs> they often do. Um, <laughs> Uh, I wanted to kind of look at some of the works that you showed at um, Paul Soto's space uh, a couple years ago. 
um, a year ago, actually. At, um, at the uh, Parkview. Parkway. Yeah, yeah. Parkview. And um, this, this is what the early work uh, looks like when you move towards non-objective abstract painting. Yeah. And we discussed how uh, some of these, not necessarily this one you'd made in Pond Studio, you had a section of the studio that you worked in. Mm -hmm. But by around 1950, um, in that year, you guys actually moved to the Bay Area. Um, moving from Mexico to the Bay Area, where you started to be in conversation with artists such as Lee Mullican, who was, ended up being your future husband, but also Gordon Onslow Ford, and members, these members in Pollen ended up forming the Donaton group of artists. Well, God, you know, what happened there mm -hmm. is very sad because um, I had two children. Yeah. And um, one of my children died. Yeah. Before we married, Pollen said to me, he, he lived in a palace when he was young. He was royalty from uh, Austria. And um, he said, in my family, everybody commits. I've seen two brothers uh, sh shoot themselves. They committed suicide in front of me, and I know that I can't, that's in my family, and um, I, I don't want to have children. And so when my son died, um, I had to have another child. Yeah. And um, I'm glad I did. I have John and I have Matthew. Yeah. And uh, I, both are precious to me. I don't know what I'd be without them, as a matter of fact, in 97. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't be alive at all. What was that move? I have a slide, I have an old photograph. Well, that's the Man Ray, which is really That's a one. Man Ray, yes. <laughs> uh, photograph and I was here. married to Pauline at that time. Yes, 47. Mm -hmm. But then I, I pulled the photograph uh, of you. And that you see, there it is. Uh, Ali was part of the dying group, you see. And um, and that's Jacqueline, married to, pa to uh, Gordon on Slow Ford, who is standing practically on the right, way on the right. And that's um, Pauline in, in, I think, and Lee is in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so th this is the time that you're up in the Bay Area. Um, for those of you who don't, uh, aren't familiar with diaton, it actually means, or dine means the possible in Greek. And it started off as a publication that Wolfgang Pollen had. And it's particularly important for art historians because artists like Robert Motherwell and, and people of his ilk contributed to the publication and became an international space for writing and thoughts about the state of art in the, uh, the United States and in Mexico. Um, and so when Pollen and Luchita moved to the Bay Area and meet up with Lee and Anz Gordon Anzua Ford, Lee Mulliken had already been familiar with Dine from what, the time that he was in the Army. He was actually reading the publication. And so um, there's this moment where these artists come together and they start making work about making you know, the energies of the universe visible. It's something, something that they talk about. Mm -hmm. And they have this major exhibition in 1951 at San Francisco But Museum you know, Dine was single-handedly that, that Pollen did that magazine. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's single-handed. And he, you know, he made up names for other people. And he had everybody that he knew working on that. Yeah, so and, he, and, and he got sick. He was in bed. I mean, you can't overdo that. And he did. He shouldn't have. But so Jacqueline is discussed as being a member of, you know, a kind of ad hoc member of the Dianton group, but you considered yourself always on the outside of the group. Is there a reason for that, or how did you, how do you situate no, I, yourself? No, we uh, I was never an outsider of the group. I, well, one of the things you said is that you didn't feel like you were a member of the Dianton um, well, I, I didn't work for Dine. I took a few photographs, but that yeah. isn't, no, I wasn't, you know, I yeah. wasn't that involved in it. Yeah. I think uh, Pollen did that single-handedly, 
and he should get that, you know. Well, not the magazine. Acknowledgement. Then. What? Not the magazine, but the art group. It, the in, art in, group. In, yeah. in the Bay yeah, Area. Yeah. Which. Yeah. I certainly had very little to contribute at that time. Were you what kind of you were making the kind of work that I showed earlier? The yes. piece from 1950. Yes, which you know at that time was not it was a very personal exp expression. I, mm -hmm. They were no one else. I mean, this this is the way I feel about it. That you know, I I was I wasn't really involved in in their conversations yeah. in a way. Yeah. yeah. I was about something else. Yeah. And that's what I, I wanted to get yeah. to. So yeah. here is the uh, Mulliken uh, piece painting that was shown uh, in the Donaton right. uh, exhibition. Um, that's beautiful. Well. Let's keep going. I think that one of the things that happens in the 60s and 70s is that you really start looking to the body. The work becomes much more representational. Um, I know that very early on you started collecting textiles, and you actually give you give. I yourself, have a collection. Yes, you have I a do. Fantastic collection. Yes, I do have a very good collection, and um, yeah. Some of it um, from early on your work as an illustrator, obviously the travels that you did in Mexico, oh, yeah. but then later India and your friendships with various owners of textile. Um, I, I, I became very interested in the body as a landscape mm -hmm. also, you see. Yeah. Uh, and it is a strange landscape. As you notice, there are no ever, no shadows of the, the, the body doesn't have a shadow next to the foot. It floats. And uh, that's... What do you think about these like, works in relationship to surrealism? Because so many of the circles you were involved in, whether it's like looking at a picture of Andre Breton or Man Ray or all of the, you know, Duchamp, of course, you have that famous story with, with him. Um, you know, they're crossovers with surrealism. How do you think about these in terms of like surrealism? I, I find it very intriguing, surrealism. Yeah. And yeah. they played games, yeah. and I minded those games because they were mean games sometimes. <laughs> you know, for instance, there was this person I forget her name always, but she always wore uh, you know bells around her ankles, and um, and she would take her shoes off. Mm -hmm. it, everybody's talking about interesting things, and she'd start stomping around. You know, doing these kind of dances that were kind of Weird. Uh, I didn't do it, but someone else did, and I was very pleased when they did. They put chocolates in her shoes. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of pranks. Need I say more? <laughs> there are a lot of a lot of How surrealist. That is. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of surrealist pranks, but I can't. I'm thinking about Man Ray's like portrait of the lips, like the idea of the body as a landscape which you approach quite differently here. And let's see. What was that about the landscape? Well, the body is a landscape. I mean, I can think you can think about some of But the, I, I, I've never seen anything like that before. I, I haven't either, but I, I think that, you know, I think that there are certain elements from surrealism that we see certain tenets that carry through. Um, some of those is the interest in the body. I'm showing you a Frida Kahlo here on the left. I you, know think, that you think the, uh, that's related to this? Not completely, of course. But not I completely. Think, I see nothing common. But if we can think about the, the way that people talk about Frida Kahlo, right? Well, how, well, as a person. You're talking about persons, not the art. But her interest in the body. Hmm? Her interest in the body and her relationship to the surrealists. No, which, she never did anything like that. Frida no, no, Kahlo of never course. did, and I never did anything like Frida Kahlo. So there are two things that are completely unrelated, outside of what would you say, the moon? <laughs> well, we did go through this, but you know, if you want to, if you, uh, that's totally fine. And that's Carrington, you see. I know because we talked about these on Friday. And Carrington was a good friend. I know. And she. Um, 
she had powers because she would say, she'd tell stories. I mean, she was amazing. She said that she could leave her body asleep well, and yeah. then she would fly over herself yeah. and watch herself sleep. Well, that's why I paired it with your painting. Well, I, I that... mean, you know, I don't believe it. But one of the things you were really interested, you, you repeat that saying, and you said you talk, you kind of think about. What's that? You said you've mentioned that you've thought about this idea of leaving your body. And I think Well, well how did she lose her body in this picture? How did she use her body in the left side? I, wow, her, that, so uh, that portrait, there's nothing in common with those two things that I see. Well, because the Carrington quote is the quote you told me. And so well, she floated over her, but I don't think that's, that's I've, it's floating because it's a landscape. Of course. So but, that landscapes don't have, you know, whole landscapes, no. But, uh, and this is Leonora, this is Leonora. This is the work in your living room. Mm -hmm. This is the work she gave you. She gave me that. She gave me that. And she did this poem. I love the poem. And her poetry is really fantastic. Yes. Oh, cat, beware the black, uh, the, the what? The something. No. Oh. Um, I think that one of the points that I think is really important to think about. And this is a self-portrait. This is a self-portrait. Yes. Is the fact that you talk about how Carrington, especially in the period that you were in Mexico. Have you ever seen any Matisse's? Of course, yeah. I yes. I mean, the human body is a, a beautiful thing. Yes. Well, Don't I, you I think? Lo I love this drawing. Yes. Because I think that. I think it's a very good drawing. It's a great drawing. I and really do. Part of the thing that I think is fascinating about it is that you do have this perspective from the body um, that we see in some well, early Mendelssohn well, Becker's. Well, that's perspective, uh, yes. Yeah. But also, like, I mean, I love the fact that this Malraux book is included. That is what? Malraux. Your feet, your feet are resting on this Malraux book. Oh, that's I, interesting. Yes. Yeah. And I think about his... Um, oh, it had nothing to do with Malraux. I didn't say you did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that. I'm sorry, but there's no, there's no connection there. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in the... I read the book. <laughs> I know. I wasn't saying that you had anything to do with it. Oh, I was just funny. saying that the, the book is in the... No, it has no connotation. My feet, you know, that's not a mean, that's not a mean I wasn't thing. trying to create meaning. I was just pointing out that uh, the book is in the, in, the, in the drawing. That's what? That the book is actually in the drawing. Oh, well, because it happened to be. I was reading it, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know why you think I'm being so accusatory. I don't, I don't know. Well, I, I don't understand your questions. What's the difference? Why, why is Malraux, the, book, uh, that, the well, book that's there, about Malraux? It has nothing to do with because it. Because Malraux is so responsible in France for the formation of museums there in the post-war period. Well, I think it's just a good drawing. It's a great drawing. It's a great drawing. But I, I think that, you know, the, the fact that that's there speaks to the fact that you were thinking through things that he was writing, like many artists were in the 1940s and 1950s. If you go through the It has the nothing to do with Malraux. It's 60s. just that I had, I, there was no, no meaning in it. It was just a drawing. So? <laughs> well, I think when we discussed this painting, we talked a lot about... You know, I have a sense of humor. <laughs> Luchita, you're killing me. <laughs> it's not well, I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> that was when I painted that. That's what I was thinking. I know, but you also <laughs> discussed a lot about the idea of the fruit. The body is a fruit. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah, we're, we're, we're terrestrial. That's true. So I think, we're terrestrial. I think what's really and, great and about and I mean, you know, yeah, uh, uh, I mean, it, it, the world is so beautiful. That's true. The world is so full of joy, and food is a joy. A baby is a joy. 
The and world is a joy. That's what that painting is about. About the joy of life. That's right. Do you mind if I'm showing this? <laughs> well, I think it's really great to look at a, a painting like this because I can really see that how involved it is with your own body and some of the things that... I think I'm involved with the human body because I have one. <laughs> exactly, your own body. My and God, I think yes. A lot of what uh, we yes, also talked I'm, about. I'm, I'm involved with birth there, you see. Exactly, is birth. It's and how birth. the fruit, the fruit in so many of them carries through from your early drawings in the 40s. Adam and Eve. I was involved with Adam and Eve and then at that time. And this is just Adam, but I have one with Adam and Eve too. You see, the left one on the left is Adam. You and see, then the is right. Adam. And the one on the right is Eve. And the right on the one is Eve. And it's, it's, it's the beginning of life. It is the beginning of life, which I, I think we can really see when we go back to these. I mean, you know, art historians talk a lot about the Venus of Willendorf, that, uh, what, what? The, what, the woman from Willendorf, you know, that small sculpture. Oh, the big one, because they were all big. It's, it's actually quite small. Uh, no, 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 I, I don't mean the statues are small, but the yeah. women are big. Exactly, the women are, are they're very voluptuous. Very voluptuous, so, it's uh, two women. <laughs> <laughs> so the interpretation is that it's actually made by women who are actually looking down, right? They're looking down at their own bodies. Their bodies that are uh, most likely pregnant in some way. You think um, you think those pre-Columbian, prehistoric things were made by women? That is one interpretation by scholars. Yes. Really? Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. 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 I um, didn't realize that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very good. <laughs> Yeah. But I think that so often we don't think about the perspective of women looking at their own bodies. And here, I think you, you know, this perspective looking down and seeing the breasts and seeing the belly and the partial hip and having that relationship to the piece of fruit and thinking about lots of fecundity, right? Bearing fruit, if you will, bearing a child. Um, I think that's also significant when we think so to look at the paintings. Right. That's when I gave up smoking. Do you want to tell, do you want to tell the audience, because a lot of the time that you were working, you were raising children and you would actually paint at night. And you said you would yes, paint that's all right. night and you that's would right. smoke that's lots right. of cigarettes. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I painted when I could. I love painting. Yeah. I know, and you, you still paint. Yeah. And I, I love shadows. So there's actually a whole body of work, and I thought I'd bring in some work that's not up in the galleries or hasn't been seen. Oh, that's that nice, yes. Like <laughs> it's a that. whole body of work of shadows, like drawings, that. and paintings. That's quite big, isn't it? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Would you talk about that? You have a story about a soothsayer. About what? A soothsayer um, who has oh, a... Oh, yeah. in India. I, yeah. I, I had Indian friends, and I would go to India once a year or something, and, and there was a soothsayer coming. The Sarabais lived there, and very nice family, and, um, and this man could tell the difference, you know, uh, in many things, but also he was very gifted in telling you the date of your death, not your birth, your death. And uh, I said I didn't want to hear it, or to see it, or to have anything to do with that person. <laughs> <laughs> but he read the day to your death to looking at your shadow. What? He, he told you that he would look at your shadow in order to interpret. No, he said he could interpret. He interpret the shadow, yeah. In, in, uh, when the death would come. Yeah, exactly. So the shadows actually have like a very much deeper. No, but this had nothing. I, I you know that. Well, that's what you told me when we were. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't remember that. No. Who knows? <laughs> I'm, you know, and I like the way that uh, my friend uh, Ryan framed this. I didn't like that painting before he framed it, and then the frame on it was so great. 
and I could, I could really, I don't mind it anymore. <laughs> well, I think there are a fair number of these uh, sky uh, paintings that are up in the gallery. Um, you started making these uh, at the same time that you're working on the body landscapes, and I think that you can clearly see some relationship to the body in them, even though they don't picture bodies. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that's biographical that's important to know is that you spent a lot of time in Taos, so you would go there for the summers. And also at the same time that you were there, um, Agnes Martin was there, whose work is very, very different. Let me get that out there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but who's also thinking about uh, scapes, you know, the environment, but the removal of the environment, so they're very much about the grid and abstraction. And when I look at these, even though they're quite different, um, I start to think about that New Mexico landscape, right? The sky, the kind of openness. Well, the sky of New Mexico is like no other. Yeah. It's one of the most extraordinary. You can see the wind, the uh, rain. First the wind, and it smells, you know, you smell the earth. And then this actually curtain of rain comes towards you. Yeah. The wind and then the rain. I mean, that is a, a, an experience you, you don't have in many places. And, and this is New Mexico. Yeah. There's no other place like it. And I have a house there. And unfortunately, at my age, I cannot live there. I gave my son the, the keys because uh, I can't breathe. Well, you've been going. I mean, when I met you, you were still going. I think the subsequent year was the first year that you hadn't gone, where you said, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't go back. I couldn't. I, could, I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't breathe there. Um, would you tell them about um, Agnes Martin? Because I, I, when I, when we first talked uh, back in 2015, one of the things you told me um, was how, how she used to pick you up. Um. Oh, we had a great <laughs> Agnes and I had great times. Yeah. Agnes, uh, she was famous all over the world, and she lived in a small house, and she was very um, strange conversations. We had strange conversations. She would tell me about uh, her having too many children. And I said, Agnes, you, you've never had children at all. <laughs> and, uh, and then she said, I'm not talking about this lifetime, dear. I'm talking about a lifetime before. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, we had, uh, she taught me to have a martini every day for lunch. <laughs> And then she was a wild driver, right? And so she, she was a wild driver. She <laughs> really was. She was a, a, a wonderful, wonderful friend. Wonderful friend. Yeah. And that's me with my first paintings, yes. Yeah. I, tr I was trying to paint as fast as I could. <laughs> <laughs> and I made brushes. Which is what I think is amazing about these paintings. So um, in 1974, Lucita had a solo exhibition at the Women's Building. Um, How did you get those photographs? I don't know. You know, My, you, saw. you saw me making the PowerPoint. Is it, is, isn't that incredible? I know. Congratulations. Thank you, darling. I'm amazed. <laughs> we were digging for them for a while because I remember wow. when we first talked. Wow. Um, we hadn't located them yet. You see? Um, Look at I, that. The 70s is really important in your practice because not only you were invited to be part of the Griller Girls, right? But also, you know, Judy Chicago and Miriam Shapiro approached you about having the show, which is, you know, two years mm -hmm. after their, their famous opening. And you have this giant solo exhibition uh, in uh, the women's building. And would you talk about having that show, especially at the height of what we now think of, of uh, second wave feminism? Was that important for you, having been a wife and a mother and well, an artist? Well, you know... And uh... It got to be too much for me, and I don't like to, uh, you know, uh, don't repeat this, huh? It's being recorded. It, this, is, this is our secret. No <coughs> secrets in the age of the internet. No, you see, this thing, this thing is too much. I mean, this group of women ended yeah. up uh, 
painting each other's parts, private parts, and this is not fun. <laughs> and I, I, left the, I, I left the group. I, could, I, I, I said no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel that it was one step too far? I mean, you're already painting your own body, right? And you, are, you obviously have spoken to me. You've been but did this becomes something else. Yes, yes, yes. And this is not right for me anyway. Yes, yes. So. But you were very excited to exhibit here in, in 74. And you obviously weren't making the work that you've been making earlier. You had moved on to. I, I I like the way I've done the corner. I'd forgotten all about that. I know it's kind of amazing. There are lots of ex there are lots of insulation. You shots know, I've forgotten all about that. I'm going to maybe think about it. <laughs> and do it again, right? <laughs> Who um, knows? I think you guys should take a close look at that slide because if we kind of, well, we'll come back to it. If we come to the last slide, um, which is a. a just a snapshot I took in your studio uh, the other day. Um, I think you can really see a through line through the stuff that we were looking at in the 1940s. Also, the portraits of the body that we saw. Um, That's in a the self 60s. portrait. It's actually yes, it's actually a self portrait. It's a self portrait, and you see that's me, the brown. That's you. I'm brown. You see. <laughs> so that's brown. That's my hair. I've always felt that this was. Uh, we're all on this little world, this little blue ball, and we're all related. The trees, the water, everything. We're related, and we have to be very careful with it. And that's what I'm, I'm worried about at this pl place, because air, water, all precious. We can't live without it. And they're being very uh, careless with it all. They're, they're just, you know, you need, <coughs> you need two parts of water for every part of oil that you take out of the ground. Mm -hmm. That's not fair. There's, it's all getting down to very little. And I think that's important for the audience to recognize is that Lichita is very much concerned with environmental issues. You collect leaves, and those leaves actually inform drawings that you make. And then this painting, for instance, is very much involved in that conversation with your concerns with the environmental issues and environmental decay that we see everywhere. But I, what I was going to say is that it seems to come, things come back into your practice, whether it's the body, whether it's this abstraction that we were seeing, things coming in and out. How do you feel about the new work? Where do you think the new work is, is going? Because you were just painting this morning, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Well, some things I like, some things I don't like of my work. You yeah. know, some I think, are, I think this is a su successful one. There are some that are not. And the ones that are not will be resolved or they'll be put away or they'll be destroyed. But uh, the ones that I like, I'll keep. A lot of text has come into the recent work. And what? I know, like text, you know, you have text. Oh, the text. I think that's very, very important in, in, in painting, too. I think text is, you know, as a matter of fact, my new paintings have the, the letters air, water, <laughs> et cetera. <laughs> and and, and uh, it, you do. You know, I'm I, not only thinking of myself, because I have very few years left, or maybe I have a lot. Who knows? Maybe I'll be the oldest woman in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, who knows? I like it. I like the way I'm going. I do, too. And I'm interested in this use of text. And I wonder, does you think it relates to like your dream book, you know, the, the, your diary? I have dream books. I yeah. have. It goes way back. Ryan has all, all those things, you know, my dream books, my photographs, my everything. But um, yes, I, I'm still writing down my dreams. My, my, I have a diary now. And that's fun to have. And. Um, who knows? And let's, uh, finally, I just want to go back to the slide because, you know, we've been talking for a long oh, time. Oh, yes. 
Um, oh, I like, I think that the hammer did a beautiful job. And you're at this moment where you're having so much, much success, right? You have this wonderful show that's reviewed. You have the LA Times article. Also, I just saw you last week in New York at the Matthew Marks opening, and there's been so much excitement about painting now and forever, and seeing those works there as well. I'm as surprised. I know you said you were surprised, but you I'm were surprised. the hit. You're the hit of New York and LA. It's, 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 like, it's amazing. It's well, you know, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what was it like going to this opening and seeing these works Oh, it was installed? wonderful. Yeah. It was wonderful. I really loved it. I went in and I, 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 I told Brian, I, I said, I love it. <laughs> and it's been, you know, 50 years no, I'm since enjoying you made so much it. of these I really paintings. Am, you yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 I'm so glad that it's happening now before I die. No, well, you've not, also yeah. you've also started you started painting again because when I met and you, I've started painting you started again, painting again, which yeah. is I think a good thing. Yeah, it's yeah. marvelous. It's it, that's that's the effect you have when you get this kind of encouragement. Yeah, yes. I'm very lucky. Well, I'm you're fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, Thank I think you. we're gonna uh, open it up to questions yes. from the audience. Yes, and maybe they'll have. Uh, better luck. Great. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have a sense of humor. What? I have a sense of humor. <laughs> well, that's good. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> we both share it. I know. <laughs> you love needling me. So it's interesting yeah. to do it on stage. <laughs> Anyone? Yeah, I just wanted to ask real quick. Please wait for the mic. I'm hard of hearing, too. It would be great if everyone could use the mic just so, so we could you, all hear. So in your last self-portrait, you were saying it was successful. Oh, no, speak your, la your last self-portrait, you said you felt it was successful. What does successful mean to you? My last stuff? Well, well uh, I, I'm worried about the world. I'm worried about the air and the water and all of these things. And I think we should all pay attention. And um, well, needless you... to say, the people in charge, you know, like governments and politics and stuff, uh, they, 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 they've got to be serious about this. And, and we should make sure that they are. Uh, don't you think? I think so. I think so. I think we should do that. When do you think a painting is finished? When do I think a painting is finished? When I like it, after I leave it for a while, I go back, and if I have a good impression of it, mm -hmm. then I let it live. Yeah. But otherwise, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be on the receiving end of that. Mm -mm. <laughs> Someone over there has a question. Could you just wait for the mic, if that's okay? Oh, yeah, oh okay. Thanks. Hi. Um, your work is so beautiful, and clearly um, you deserve this kind of recognition much earlier in your life and in your career. And I'm curious, um, I don't get the impression um, that you really aggressively pursued a public career, and I'm sort of curious if that was coming from the fact that it was a personal practice and you didn't have a strong desire to have a public engagement or was it that you didn't feel that um, the because of the times that you were living in that um, as a woman you might um, um, that it might just the cards were too stacked against you for that I'm curious well you see with me it's very strange because I was married to a wonderful painter, Lee Mulliken. The Metropolitan just bought a painting of his. My son, Matt Mulliken, is one of the most talented painters in Europe uh, and New York and, and here too, yeah. but, but certainly in Europe. 
-hmm. He has the, the and, and rightly so, because he really is very talented. And he was just in that show. And I have a yeah. grandson who is a painter and a granddaughter who is a painter. And they're both talented. So the Mulliken name, I think, is pretty well covered, <laughs> you know. And especially my husband, uh, he was never, he always had a dealer that did work for him that didn't really like his work, Herbert Palmer. Herbert um, Palmer didn't like the work. What about, about Marion Willard? You know, I read all of Mulliken's letters between he and Marianne, and one of the things that was fascinating to me is that Pollen actually writes to Lee at some point and says, I want to do a show of just Luchita's work. I don't want to, and, and then he's like, I don't want to do a show of your work. I want to do a show of Luchita's work. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have that in a letter from the, no kidding. the 50s. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I think there's a way in which Pollen, because he really, in a, takes you on as an equal co uh, collaborator. Like even with taking the photographs for the magazine or, do you think that's true? Pollen? Like, well, he enlisted you to take the photographs for the publication, or you said in some ways he was like a teacher or a figure that you I think could I to. think he gave me the, the the camera. He never thought of me much as as a, as an artist. I was an artist, no, not a painter. Not no, not as an artist. No. Well, in this letter, he seemed to really love the work, so it's it's curious. He never said anything to me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You know. Was that I, I worked in the studio. He had a huge studio, yeah. huge. And there was a little space in the back of, of a curtain, and that's where I worked. Yeah. Well, we see that with Lee Krasner and Pollock as well, right? She's got this little tiny room, and he's got the barn. Was it difficult being married to other artists while you were making your own work? No, no, it wasn't. No, uh, no because for me, all I needed was a space, you see. Yeah. And I had a cat. <laughs> <laughs> and the cat would keep me company <laughs> as I worked. So to speak to her question about this idea of public, for you it was enough to make the work, even though you, you obviously exhibited it throughout your lifetime. But what was that tension like between the private practice and the public exhibition? Well, the thing is, you see, that art for me has always been like keeping a diary. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the work I do now, I wouldn't have done when I was young. Mm -hmm. And the work I did young, I wouldn't do now. Mm -hmm. um, so somehow it's related to, to my life yeah. in that sense. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. And so, uh, so uh, you know, that's, that's, that's what I'm painting now is air and water and... <laughs> <laughs> the things around you. And, be, and, things, and things that bother me and or, things, or uh, make me happy, or, you know. Yeah. And um, there's someone over here who had a question. I have a question. Besides your beautiful art, besides your beautiful art, you are you look beautiful. Hmm? Hi. Okay. This is better. What's that? Your art is absolutely I beautiful. I'll repeat it. What's that? I'll repeat it. It's okay. I'll repeat what she said. Okay, great. Yeah. Let me see. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Your art is beautiful, and you look amazing and very beautiful. Sorry for this personal question, but what is your diet? What do you eat? What do you drink? What's that? And what exercise? She wants to know, because she and, says yeah, you're very beautiful, exercise. which, by the way, was something that Lakita has been hearing her entire <laughs> life. <laughs> if you don't know how many of these artists... Um, uh, wanted to marry her. I mean, who wouldn't? But you're also very fashionable and made your own clothes. And Yes, I do make my own clothes. Yes. Yeah. And, the, you know, he had a closet full of these beautiful, beautiful uh, things from her travels all over the world. Um, she wants to know what your diet is. I know that she has two eggs in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> she does know. I know. I, yeah. I, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what, what else do you like to eat besides I I cucumber like salad? I like vegetables. She loves vegetables. I love vegetables, and I mm -hmm. love, um, I, I don't drink, you see. I mm -hmm. did drink at a time, uh, but I don't drink anymore. And it's, it's uh, it, for me, if I, if I drink, I get cramps. 
so it was time to stop. But you encourage me, when we hang out, you encourage me to drink. What? <laughs> when we hang out, you encourage me to drink. You're like, you, you have yeah, a cocktail. Yeah, 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 you can have a cocktail, absolutely. But, but you don't get cramps, you see. I know, it's true, it's true. Yeah. Not yeah. yet, anyway. Hi, Lucita. Uh, Hi. In your narrative here, you talked about how you create and then you revisit, you come back and you look at the painting and you, if you like it, then you keep it. If you don't like it, I have the same sensation when I'm creating, I'm I, quite honestly, I'm rather insecure about the thing. I'm just, I'm in it. It's a lot of fun. And then I come back later and I look at it and I go, yeah, that's great. Or no, that's terrible. And it seems that you have a similar experience in creating. Yes, I, 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 you know, some things I can fix, but if I, if it doesn't want to live, I don't let it, I let it die. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's gone, it's gone. But I think you have to surprise a beginning, a painting, and, uh, and it can, it can, it can tell you where it's going. And sometimes you can surprise the painting because you just make one more dash and, and there it is. It's good. <laughs> so it's all a great adventure. I think that's one of the parts of painting, of art, that is so magic, you know, that it, it's, it's so necessary for me anyway. Yeah. I feel sorry for the people that don't do it. What? That I feel sorry for the people that don't paint. Oh, <laughs> they have other things. They have other things, yeah. <laughs> yes. I guess we're through. No, we have more. Oh. We have more. Hi. Two more. I see two oh, other I questions. See. Yeah. I can't see that bright light on my face. I know, it's face. very bright. Hi, Luchita. I'm here. <laughs> I can't see who it is. I came late. I just want to ask. Oh, you, can you hear me? I yes. want to ask you uh, what inspires you, what age you started uh, painting, and what kind of things inspires you. They say that um, artists are telling their life story. Do you believe in that? And uh, where where do you get uh, how to express yourself for each of the paintings? Where do you get the inspiration? Is it feelings or the inspiration? Yeah, where do you get your inspiration? Um, she's asking, do you get them from feelings? Do you get them from? I mean, I think you've said there are things. She also collects leaves and does drawings and. Well, from the paintings today, as I say, is what I worry about. You see, mm -hmm. um, I'm inspired by. I'm shouting. That's what I'm doing really when I paint today. I'm shouting. I'm saying, you know, take care of the water there, isn't all that, you know, we're limited. All that water in the North Pole is, you know, it's, it's, it's melting. Yeah. And that's all the water we've got. But nobody seems to, you know, it doesn't come naturally through the faucet. It's, 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 we're isolated, we're terrestrial, and we have to think of other people too, to come. Yeah, exactly. It's about yeah. not just us, obviously. It's, it's not. It's, a, it's about our children's it's about children. children. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Which is something we've something really lost track Something that we of. have to worry about, right. When did you first have this interest in the environment? Because, you know... Because, because we've done such terrible things to it. When did you when did you start thinking about the environment? Because I'm always surprised that there were environmentalists, you know, in the 40s and 50s when you read about, you know... Was that, did it happen for you that early? Because you've told me stories about being a child in Venezuela, about this interest in the land, about like the spirituality of the butterfly, your interactions yeah, as a yeah, child. Yeah, yeah. Do you think it started then, or do you think it, it just came later well, as I've we came? Well, I've always felt, you know, very close to nature. Yeah. But. Um, like that early painting we saw. Right, right. I was brought up, you see. I was brought up by these two old women, yeah. me and my brother. And my brother had a, an old woman, and I had an old woman. <laughs> and my, my, my 
he had his his old woman was tall and and very regal, and my old woman was short and wrinkled, and she smelled of fire. It was a wonderful smell because at that time in Venezuela, you see, um, they there was no gas. It was wood, a wood stove, and I remember playing with my dolls, and my aunt uh, was cooking, yeah. but she was cooking with, with, with wood. And so I, I, I love, I love, still love the smell of burning wood, but not bad, not good for you. Uh, <laughs> That's lots of sulfites, good. I think. Yeah. Like, who is, um, is someone else had a question? I think someone down here, do you, you still have one? No? Hi. Hi. I'll just wait for the wait mic for if it's okay here. with you. Hi, Richita. It's really an honor to hear you speak and to see your work. I just wanted to say that. But also, it's just curious if there were any particular artists that you were really interested in and whose work you really were fond of. I, I didn't get the last um, What were the artists that you were particularly interested in? What was the what? Are there any particular artists that you were particularly interested in? What are these artists mm -hmm. I'm interested in mm -hmm. now? Artists. Well, you own. You know, you were talking to Noguchi. You owned a Noguchi. You had the Blanc piece in your house in yes. Carrington. Uh, yeah, but you see, at, at ninety eight, there's this, a. It's a very strange life at ninety eight because your memory. I mean, most people are in bed now. <laughs> you see? So, well, trust me. <laughs> Um, those are the people that we've talked about. I mean, Lenora Carrington is really important to you. Yes. You did know Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera yes. briefly in Mexico. Yes, yes. Uh, they Bertan, were all friends, yeah. Duchamp, of course. There's a famous yeah, story about yeah, Duchamp yeah, giving you a yeah, foot rub. Yeah. Do you want to tell them that story? And Jean Reynal and uh, yeah. about Duchamp. And the foot rub? Yes. Well, I love this story. Yeah, well, uh, he was a very good... I stayed when I, I was living... I was living in Mexico City, and I would go and visit this friend called Jean Reynal, who lives at 240 West 11th Street in New York, <laughs> who used to live, because there I don't, I don't know who lives there now. <laughs> but, we could go find um, out, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but then she, she, her, her very good friend was Marcel Duchamp. And uh, he would come and visit her. And she was, she was, she did mosaics, and he would help her because, but he didn't want anybody else to know that he was, uh, you know, uh, helping her with her shows. So it was all very mysterious. And and Marcel would come, and they would, you know, be food. And and I, at one point, one day, I was already in in bed and. Uh, but when I heard it was Marcel Duchamp, I came out. I wanted to hear what was being said, and so um, I was in my nightgown, my 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 cover and and stuff, and uh, I put my my feet up, you know, on where I was sitting, and Marcel was sitting right next to me, and he began to massage my feet, and I thought nothing of it, you know, it was, it felt good. So <laughs> it became it became you know uh, the, the 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 kind of everybody was telling everybody that uh, he had massaged my feet. It was a scandal. It was a scandal. Talk of <laughs> it was a scandal. <laughs> yes. But besides that, besides these kind of personal interactions, one of the things I'm going to try to say, and maybe she won't let me live this down, is that there were obviously interactions in terms of the art you were going to see in the galleries. You knew a lot of the poets from, you know, Ashbury to all of these people. Oh, I did. Yeah. Yes, I knew everybody. And so there, for me, a possible interpretation could be this, that there's a lot of crossovers that were happening and influences, whether they're um, conscious or yeah. not conscious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. Well, I was, I, I was in the art world, and, and that was that. Yes, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Noguchi was a very important friend in my life. Well, and I love thinking so, about his Kuros yeah. figures, you know, those figures that he makes in the 40s 
that are supposed to be some kind of amalgamation of East and West, right? The kind of way of him thinking about the body um, in this kind of post-war period and the ways in which there are openings into the body. And I love thinking about them in this, on this body of work that you did later, even though they're quite different. One sculpture, one's painting, mm -hmm. you know, these curos are obviously young men, your figures mm -hmm. are mainly women. Um, but yeah. I think that there, there are definitely um, crossovers there in many ways. Well, art, art is, is a marvelous thing to, to have. To be aware of, and I think uh, it's a very happy life if you if you live it. Well, it seems like it's created an amazing life. I mean, I can't imagine. Can you imagine knowing all these luminaries of the past twentieth century and twenty, you know, twenty first century, and yeah. really kind of lived your life through art and, yeah. and making. No, and and so then my children, things. my husband, everybody. Is an artist. Yeah. My grandchildren. It's 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 a wonderful kind of community. Yeah. Really. I mean, we haven't even spoken about everyone. Just in the back room, we were talking about the Eameses who lived across the street from you, and going over there. And you're in a lot of the Eames films. Um, your eyes, or even Lee's hands, and um, you're also in that movie, The Egyptian. But just like the fact that so much of your life was lived through this Korean creative process and through the, the life of other creatives as well, yeah, the kind yeah. of as they intersected. Right, 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 right. Are there any more questions? Hi. Um, I just, I really came because I, I love your work and I love your husband's work. And um, I don't know if you remember, but 50 years ago, you drew a portrait of me in Chile. Oh. And I still have it, and it's a very oh, uh, really? special. Oh, great. Yes. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And uh, oh, nice. I don't know if you remember Jean Menzi, but I'm his daughter. And you asked my mother if you could draw me, and she asked me, and I said yes. And I remember sitting for you and being really bored. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> but I love it. So thank you. You're welcome. How oh, nice. Okay. Is someone writing a book about your life? What? Is someone writing a book about your life? Is someone oh, writing a book yes. about your life? And I yes. love your work and sense of humor. It's beautiful. <laughs> uh, I... I uh, I, I, I do a, a diary, and maybe I'll, after I die, my son will publish it. <laughs> but there will be a book that comes out uh, that, yeah, will have essays from numerous contributors, and that's coming up along with a really great uh, reproduction of a full body of work um, spanning, as you can see, from you know, 1941 all the way to the present. Wow. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, I think we have more questions. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I just wanted to say I'm so inspired by your life. And I know that your son John did a movie, Finding Lee Mulligan, but I think the real story is Finding Lucita Hurtado. <laughs> so I don't really do social media, but I was going to see if your son had a website, and I was going to say, hey, dude, you know, you got to get this one going, too. Because <laughs> what a story. <laughs> what a life you had. Nice. Well, I think that, like, uh, as that's a perfect place to end, finding Luchita Hurtado. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I, uh, you want some help? Yeah. Wait, no. Stand. Like that.